afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to St. Peter's. Don't worry, we're not shouting now. But I just want to say hello. 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 It's such a good looking bunch. If you could see what I could see from you here, I think you'd be impressed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, today, we've got two bunches. We've got the oral service for two days in two weeks, which we'll leave. And later in the service, we'll be leaving the three bunches. Okay? Everything you need. Is that better? <laughs> we have the, it's all going very well, isn't it? It's all wonderful. Great. Thank you, Beth. Um, everything you need will be marked in bold. So when we come to it, don't worry, we're not using the whole book. We're just using a section of it. But every, all the responses, everything you need is marked in bold. Two things. When we come to the responses, I want to hear you. Karen and Dave want to hear you. When it comes to the hymns, we want to hear you. You've got a fabulous choir. We want to hear you sing. So please don't be shy at responding. Now, there's a very special thing that you do have to do that we're just going to have a little practice with now. There will come a section of the service where um, David and Karen have renewed their vows. And I'm going to ask all of you a question. And you respond heartily and with love, we will. So we're going to try it now. I will say, will you... The family and friends of David and Karen continue to support and uphold them in their marriage now and for the years to come. We will. Perfect. If we can do it that but louder, that would be great. So on behalf of St. Peter's, welcome. And we'll be starting presently. Thank you. Ready, aren't we? Ladies and gentlemen, will you please be upstanding to welcome Karen?
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and also with you. <laughs> God is love and those who live in love live in God and God lives in them. And we pray, God our Father, you have taught us through your Son that love is the fulfilling of the law. Grant to your servants, David and Karen, that loving one another, they may continue in your love until their lives end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We have come together in the presence of God to give thanks with David and Karen for 27 years of married life, to rejoice together and to ask for God's blessing. As our Lord Jesus Christ was himself a guest at the wedding in Cana of Galilee, so through his spirit, he is with us here now. Marriage is a gift of God in creation. And as a means of his grace, it is given that husband and wife may comfort and help each other, living faithfully together in times of need as well as in times of plenty, in sadness and in joy, in sickness and in health, it is given that with delight and tenderness they may know each other in love. In marriage, a couple belong together and live in the community. It is a way of life created and hallowed by God that all should honour. Therefore, we pray with them that strengthened and guided by God, they may continue to fulfil his purpose in their life together. Now, if we're comfortable to remain standing, please do, as we join together for our first hymn, Come to a Wedding, Come to a Blessing. Thank you. Please do be seated. As Ross uh, brings our first reading to us. <laughs> Excuse the glasses. I've been asked by David and Karen to do the first reading 
This is an extract from Captain Corelli's mandolin. And according to Alexa, I pronounce it Louis de Bernays. Love is a temporary madness. It erupts like an earthquake and then subsides. And when it subsides, you have to make a decision. You have to work out whether your roots have become so entwined together that it is inconceivable that you should ever part because this is what love is. Love is not breathlessness. It is not excitement. It is not the promu promulgation <laughs> had to have spell it <laughs> of the promises of eternal passion. This is just being in love, which any of us can convince ourselves we are. Love itself is what is left over when being in love is burned away, and this is both an art and a fortunate accident. Those that truly love have roots that grow together, each un other underground, and when their pretty blossoms have fallen from their branches, they find that they are one tree and not two. Well done, thank you. I think that deserves a round of applause, don't you? That was really good. Thank you. If I could ask Pam to bring our scripture reading. This is a reading from Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 to 17. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. <coughs> Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom and with gratitude in your hearts. Sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Thank you, Pam. Let's just pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would open our ears and our hearts to your word and to your spirit. Well, I think we can all agree that there's a theme to our service of worship today. And that, theme, <clears throat> and that theme is love. But what is love? I think if you were to ask 100 people, you might get 100 different answers. For example, some scientists might tell you that those loving feelings, that, that thrill, that rush that we get when we meet that certain special someone, well, they're just down to hormones. When we're attracted to someone, our brains release extra hormones, putting more dopamine and oxytocin into our systems. These are feel-good chemicals, and when these feel-good chemicals get round our system, they can make us feel euphoric. Now, that's dead interesting, but I wonder, is that what love is? Well, in a spirit of taking this research further, I turned to two experts on the matter, two leading uh, people in the field. I turned, actually, to David and Karen, and I asked them, to look back at their life together and to share without conferring. Now, you didn't confer, did you? You didn't. To share without conferring things that they, that they have loved and do love about each other. And perhaps, perhaps just one teeny thing that perhaps they weren't so keen on. We'll see. Here's what they said. Karen, you say that when you two were getting to know each other, you liked David's gentle manner. You felt he was someone you could rely on. And now, years later, you still feel that. You still love these things about him. And you say he's always there for you. And David, Karen loved your sense of humor. In fact, she says that most of your friends know David as the joker and Karen as the bossy one. Really? Can that be true? Is that because Karen hates injustice? And I think when people look deeper, Karen, you said, they see that you're both such kind people and that you're made for each other. 
David, Karen says that you are her rock, her stars, and her moon. And without you, there is no us. And Karen loves, loves being us. There is one thing, though. David, apparently you're a bit of a you're a bit of a perfectionist. Is this right? Shy, a bit shy. Well, it's making a nuts, David. It's making a nuts. She says you can never make your mind up. So the question is, can you please make your mind up more quickly? Because that would be great, says Karen. Thanks. Your turn, David. Karen thinks. Karen, David thinks. There's so much about you he finds beautiful and loving. So I've just had to pick out a few, a few of the highlights. Now, Karen, when you two first met, he thought you were a stunner. He thought you were out of his league. And he still thinks that way about you now. He thinks you're stunning. He's still pinching himself. And he loves the way you think. He trusts your judgment. He knows you're bright. He thinks you're smart. And he loves your care inside, your heart and care for family and friends and those, and those around you. And he loves that you care about him. And that you work so well together as a team. He says you, you two complement each other. <laughs> but really, Karen, the main thing is, what it all comes down to, what the bottom line is, what it comes down to for David is this. It's a bag of chips. You remember, on your first date, he took you to the chippy. He took her to the chippy on the first date. I'm not saying any more than that. The chippy. Oh, you went on the first date, but the chips, apparently, Karen, were cold. Is this true? And David says, without hesitation, you threw them in the bin, you marched back into the shop, and you demanded a fresh lot. Karen, that impressed David. That impressed him a lot. And as a side note... He says, that Bacchus had better watch the step tonight. That's all I have to say on that matter. So what is love? Well, I think we've just demonstrated that it's nuanced, that it's complex, that it's fun and it's important, and it can involve chips. Where's the bad in that? And you two demonstrate there's something else about it. You demonstrate that it's real, and that's a fact supported by the Bible, supported by the Scripture, that Pam has just read to us. Scripture tells us that it's the freely given gift of God. And it reminds us that love is vital. And our scripture today tells us that love has a look. Perhaps even a dress code. What do I mean? Well, the passage from scripture that Pam has read to us, in this scripture, St. Paul says we should clothe ourselves with love. You should dress in the outfit, in the wardrobe that God has picked out for you. And in this wardrobe, you will find here in this outfit that God's chosen for you, you will find compassion and kindness and humility and quiet strength. And the reading goes on to remind us of the importance of being even-tempered and quick to forgive. In fact, St. Paul says, we should forgive as quickly and as completely as God forgives us. And this passage continues. It doubles down on tips for your life together. It says that regardless of anything else, wear love. It's your basic all-purpose garment. Never be without it. And the scripture also reminds us, you don't have to do this on your own. David and Karen, you're not without help. Your friends and family here are going to commit to supporting you throughout the rest of your marriage. And that's a really important commitment. But you have something more. You have God on your side. If you turn to him, you can trust him. If you open your heart to his spirit, you can call on his love and the faithfulness of God and of his son, Jesus Christ. We've already mentioned that you two complement each other, that you two work together as a team. Well, if you, wrote, if you open your hearts to God and to his spirit, God's on that team with you. Today's reading from Colossians says that the peace of Christ, the peace of God's son, can keep you in tune with each other, 
in step with each other. It says that the peace of God can help you to cultivate a culture of thankfulness. And thankfulness can play such an important role in growing and sustaining love. And if we were to read on just a couple of verses forward, we'd see something else. We'd see that we're encouraged to give God's word plenty of room in our lives. In fact, this reading says, let the word of Christ have the run of the house. Give it plenty of room. Your reading that you've chosen from scripture reminds us that we must put on love. For it's love that ties us together. It's love that makes us complete. And from what you two have told me, I think you know that. Love is a gift from God. It's a pillar of the Christian faith. It's embodied in God's Son, Jesus Christ. And in this Christian service of worship here at St. Peter's, you're not only celebrating all that, but you're marking something really, really important too. You're marking that through this worship here, through the words, through the music, through the prayers, through the promises renewed, you're marking that the great love you two have, one for the other, is held, is cherished in the even greater love of God. So what is love? Love is a gift and a blessing from God. And through the love and grace of God, we all have a bridge to the future, in this world and the next. That's a blessing of love from God. David and Karen, may you know the peace, the grace, and the love of God in your life now, in your life ahead, in your life to come, and forevermore. May God bless you both. Amen. If you can do so comfortably, please do stand as we sing our second hymn, Make Me a Channel of Your Peace.
David and Karen, I invite you now to recall the vows that you made at your wedding. Could you turn and face each other, please? And hold hands. There you go. David, will you repeat after me? I, David, David. took you, Karen, Karen. to be my wife. wife. Karen, would you repeat after me? I, Karen, took you, David, to be my husband. Now, David and Karen, we say together, if you repeat after me, but you say it at the same time, to have and to hold from that day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, till death us do part, according to God's holy law. This was our solemn vow. Today in the presence of our family and friends, today in the presence, we affirm our continuing commitment to this vow. Will you, the family and friends of David and Karen, continue to support and uphold them in their marriage now and in the years to come? May I have the rings, please? Thank you. Heavenly Father, source of everlasting love, revealed to us in Jesus Christ and poured into our hearts through your Holy Spirit, everlasting love, that love which many waters cannot quench, neither the floods drown. That love which is patient and kind, enduring all things without end. By your blessing, let these rings be to David and Karen, symbols to remind them of the covenant made on their wedding day. Through your grace, in the love of your son, and in the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Say after me, David. I gave you this ring as a sign of our marriage. With my body, I honor you. All that I am, I give to you. All that I have, I share with you. Within the love of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Say after me, I give you this ring as a sign of our marriage. With my body, I honor you. All that I am, I give to you. All that I have, I share with you. Within the love of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, if you two would like to kiss, you may. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. The Lord mercifully grant you the riches of his grace, that you may please him both in body and soul, and living together in faith and love, may receive the blessings of eternal life. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we lift up our hearts to you through Jesus Christ our, our Lord. Through him you have made a covenant of grace with your people by the outpouring of your Holy Spirit. We praise you for the gift of marriage in which the love of husband and wife is brought together and reflects your plan of love for the world. We thank you today for David and Karen and for leading them to each other in friendship and in love, in commitment and in trust, and for bringing them here 
for the blessing of their marriage. Living God, by the presence of your Holy Spirit, may they know the risen Christ to be with them now as they celebrate this covenant together. May their lives be a witness to your saving love in this troubled world. As you pour out your love, may they grow together in your sight and each be to the other a champion in joy, in comfort, in sorrow, and a strength in need. As you bless the earthly home at Nazareth with the presence of your son, may their home be a place of security and peace. As we lift to you now, David and Karen's family and friends, we're thinking now and praying for those who can't be with us today. Lord, we name before you David's dad, Jack. Karen's mum, Barbara, and stepdad, Ken, who are in Spain. Karen's beloved Poppy. We name friends who can't be with us, Arthur and Malcolm, Pete and Yvonne in New Zealand, and Peter and Denise in America. And we lift you now, Lord, everyone watching online, and all here with us at St. Peter's. We pray that you will bring us all at last to that great marriage banquet of your son in our home in heaven, where with all your saints and angels in the glory of your presence, we will forever praise you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's stand. Now, you've got a blue service book. I would ask everyone now to turn to the blue service book. And in this section of the service, we're going to be following the sections from page 7 in the blue service book. Please join in with the sections marked in bold. To crown all things, there must be love. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. And from page seven, the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Now, without moving from our seats, can we make a sign of peace to each other, a wave, a smile, a nod? You may turn and just say, peace be with you, peace be with you, peace be with you. In your goodness, Lord, accept the gift of our love. And with the Father's affection, watch over this couple you have joined in the covenant of marriage. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, we are going to go to the table. I believe the choir are going to sing for us now, Andrew. Wonderful. If, you, if uh, David and Karen would make your way up to the chairs of the front.
If you can please turn to page 8 in your blue Holy Communion book. We say together the sections marked in bold. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. And now we give you thanks because you have made the marriage between Christ and his church a pattern for the marriage between husband and wife. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying together, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who, on the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. Responding again together on page 8. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we share these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us by your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven. We worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing, honour and glory and power be yours, one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. And on page nine, we pray together, the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today your daily bread. Forgive us our sin, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And we continue on page nine. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to his supper. And on page 10, we say together, we do not presume to come to this, your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs from under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his bodies, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Now all are welcome at the table. As we're directed, please do come up. If you want to take communion, if you, if you take communion in your normal church, if you wish to take communion, that is fine. If you want to come for a blessing only, then please do come up to be blessed. Um, communion today is in one kind only. We will just be distributing the communion wafer, not the wine. Um, so please draw near with faith.
the body of Christ. The blood of Christ shed for you. We turn now to page 11 in your Holy Communion books and we say together our prayer after communion. Praying, Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup live life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope that you have set before us so that we all children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and watch over you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Now we come to our final hymn. So if you can stand comfortably, please do so as we sing the Lord of the Dance. Lord God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, 
the holy, undivided Trinity, guard you, save you, and bring you to that heavenly city where he reigns forever and ever. And on page 12 of our service order, we respond to the words of the dismissal. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.